Hello my friends. Some of the challenges that we do out here at Rewild U, like the Spartan Cold Fire Challenge, you've probably watched some of the forest monks with some pretty extreme fire making challenges. And when people leave Rewild University, I want them after their programs to be able to be really, really expert with fire, to be able to start a fire in almost any conditions. What that takes is understanding one of the most important principles about fire making, which is that heat needs to go somewhere. And often the mistake we're going to make with punk wood or any other type of fire making, this also applies to a regular fire set, the small sticks, if they don't lead to bigger sticks. If I have a fire and the heat is just bleeding off, it's just going up, it's not going anywhere except into the air, then I'm going to be losing a lot of that thermal energy. To get a fire to go, what we need to happen is for it to achieve a chain reaction. When it achieves that chain reaction, then whatever substance we're using, again, punk wood, then there's enough heat that is interacting with that substance so that it's going to maintain itself. It's going to continue burning. Now, some punk woods, you've all heard about punk wood, it's a magical coal extender. Some punk woods are so great that I'm going to hit it with a fire steel and just the tiniest little spark is going to take and create a chain reaction. Because of the way it's molecularly structured, it just feeds it really well and it's going to keep burning, burning, burning and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We see that with chaga and with hoof fungus. But what you may not have heard if you've watched videos on the amazing properties of punk wood is that not all punk wood is made equally. Depending on the species of the tree and the type of rot, every punk wood is going to behave differently. This is a white pine, and you might be able to see that this is a really geometric type of punk wood. See how it's breaking up into these squares and rectangles, and these chunks, very geometric. Now, when that happens with white pine, I've found that this does not tend to be a very high quality punk wood. There's one little trick to note, sometimes, one tree is going to have two different kinds of punk wood. Over here we have some really spongy stuff and then we have the geometric stuff and that spongy stuff is going to take a lot easier and go straight into chain reaction. But today I want to show you a technique with punk wood that I call caving punk wood and it's going to allow you to use a very low quality punk wood if that's all you have and be successful in getting it to take and start a fire we start fires in pouring rain with these materials. So they are functional. You just have to know how to cave the punk wood. First of all, I'm going to show you what happens with this punk wood when we hit it with the fire steel and we are not caving it. Okay, so you can see I got it to take and if I keep blowing on it really hard, it might go for me. But it took me a long time to get this to go, and if we watch it for a moment, it's probably just going to go out. That one on the one side is out, and now this side is on its last. and it's gone. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to take another piece of punk wood. I'm going to touch it to the orange. I'm going to blow. And what I'm doing, if you can imagine this, is that the heat that's dissipating off of this one is going to be feeding into this one. And the heat that starts to grow on this one is going to be feeding back into this one. I'm creating a small cave, small place, where that heat can grow and feed off of itself in order to try to create a chain reaction. Once I get this going and a little bit larger, always keeping it touching. That's gonna to be really important. I'll bring it up again. Then I'm gonna bring some other pieces of punk wood in here, feed it around it, 
until I've got a large enough cave that we can actually start a fire. I really want to keep these two touching the whole time. If I don't do that, I won't be creating a cave. And it's not going to work for me. Now I've got enough that I've got a small chain reaction going. If I leave it alone, it's probably not going to go. but I do want to start to gather around some tinder. It's not a safe day to start a fire, so I'm just gonna get flames for you. And show you how this works. If it was a rainy day, I would be wanting to put a whole bunch of this punk wood into my teepee fire set. And then I can generate a lot of heat. I mean, this is pretty hard to hold because it's so hot. And you can see how I can just keep generating heat, generating heat on a cold day. That's gonna allow me to use the heat to dry off all of my other materials and steam them off over time. Let's blow this into flame quick. So remembering to use this caving technique, the two pieces of punk wood have to be touching each other, right up against each other. You're gonna get a little bit of orange and you wanna take another piece of punk wood, you wanna to touch it very lightly to that other piece of orange and then be applying either wind, if you've got some nice wind, or your breath. And that is gonna take that transfer of heat and be putting it into the materials that you're trying to ignite instead of just letting it bleed out into the air. This is kind of an advanced technique, but it's fun to practice with. It's really gonna teach you how to take a little teeny piece of orange and to make it grow and to get a fire out of it. When you're sitting around the campfire, if you have some of this kind of not so good punk wood, you can just take a little teeny spark from the fire, little teeny coal, put it in there, and then see if you can Get it to take by using another piece of punk wood to essentially almost just gently hold it down. And that's called caving. It's going to make a huge difference in your ability to start fires under adverse conditions. Tell me if you've ever used this technique, if you have a name for it, and if you have any specific ways that you take really junky punk wood that <laughs> doesn't work very well and you make it work for you. Thanks for watching, my friends. Can't wait to hear what you have to say in the comments.